What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to yet another Arsenal versus Chelsea preview. And I've got yet another Arsenal guest with me right now, Babs. First off, how's your week been? Also, Merry Christmas as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Merry Christmas to the viewers as well. Uh, my week has been as bad as it normally is, thanks to Arsenal. But um, it is what it is. We're getting used to it now. Yeah, in this video, we're going to be doing a combined 11. We're going to do this based on ability, not based on form, because let's be real, if we're doing this on form, it's a bit of a sticky one right now still. Yeah. But yeah, we're going to do it on ability so we can have some sort of a debate. But before we start this video, as usual, if you guys haven't done so already, press the like button, hit the subscribe button, smash the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content. And yeah, let's go straight into the lineup. Um, four three three formation. Or are you feeling yeah, anything different? Now we'll go for the four three. Four three three formation. Okay, we'll start in goal. Um, I'm not going to talk about now. We don't have Kepper anymore, so you don't need to worry about that. Edward Mendy versus Burnt Leno. Leno. I'm gonna have to go Leno. for the people with ten clean sheets. Listen, listen. I respect Mendy. Don't get it twisted. I respect Mendy. I'm only going off Leno because I've seen Mendy play ten games. Whereas I didn't watch him Liga, whereas Leno's been doing it in the league consistently for two, three years now. He's not really ever let us down massively. Obviously, you could say the Chelsea game last hit the Emirates. But, you know, his mistakes have been far and few between, and he's consistently one of our best performers. Saved us quite a few times, actually. Um, and I just think Mendy could be better than I'm Leno. sorry he hasn't no, been the no, same this season, though. Like, I get no, the he, injury been, more okay, look, look, I think what happened, right, was Arsenal fans were in love with him last year. He got injured. Unfortunately, thanks to the Mopey, absolute waste man. Um, and then Martinez came in, and Martinez was fantastic, like beyond our belief and how good he could be. And fans were just like, "Oh, this guy, this guy's good as well." And we got kind of stuck in two minds. Um, looking back at it, would I have kept Martinez? Yes, but you still would have had to had a debate. I think Leno's still a top goalkeeper. He's been consistent, and I think you just have to go for that over. That also sounds like he's gone down a level. I've also heard, and I need someone to quote me if this is true. Apparently, Kepa has more clean sheets than Leno has in the league. I, I, I don't know if that's true. Um, I'm trying I, to see I, if it's true. I've heard look, that that's true. Look, listen, wherever it is for Leno, I'm judging the goalkeeper off him and not his defence. Chelsea have better defenders than Arsenal do, so I would expect you to have a better defence. Whereas as a goalkeeper, I think you can't really have the debate yet, whereas if Mendy can do it for the entire season, because recently he's dropped off, the Wolves game, the game before that as well gets Everton, yo, do you know what I mean? So let's just be careful with him. Let's not get too carried away at last. Remember the last time you tried to compare a goalkeeper to Leno? You know, where's he at now? Apparently, so, um, he has more clean sheets than Leno. Oh, so it's a I bit don't know if that's true, I'm, I'm trying to make that. But listen, you know and I know right now it's Leno. Right now, like, isn't, you know. Maybe it feels Leno. And you said as well, you said, you said form, not ability. So ability-wise, you can only see Leno right now. Because you haven't seen Mendy play before this season, have you? Mm. Come on, don't, come on. Let's I'm get. Gonna, let's get. I'm gonna have facts. to put a question mark on this one. Oh, we're gonna have to put oh, a question yes. mark on this Say one. We'll come on. back to it. Again, we'll go you know, to right back because I know I have this one in the bag. Reese James, you can't have a debate about this one. Yeah, and I know obviously yeah, Reese James has been fantastic. And if if maybe Mitten and I was playing a few more games, mm. started a few more games, maybe you could have a debate. But James has been outstanding, and Bellerin is. He can't take throw-ins, so I would not rather have. I rather have Reese James. Um, who's your Who's your backup right back? Aspi, I saw back I'd rather, I'd rather have Aspi as well, better. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go for Rich James right back. I don't want to debate that. So, yeah. all right, cool, cool, cool. Um, centre backs. Now, mm -hmm. um, I'll be real. Even defensively, it's been peak for you, man, this season. I would have to go for Kurt Zuma and Thiago Silva. They've both been excellent, both together and in their individual stats as yeah. well. They've both been brilliant. Nah, look, this listen, season. you can't really argue against any of the players you said there. But if you were to have an Arsenal player in there, it'd be Gabriel. 100%. Um, if we had been Yeah, yeah. But Thiago Silva's been class and he's he is a world-class centre-back, isn't he? Even though he's, what is he, 35, 36? Um, 36. He's, yeah, he's still, he's still at a very good level. Um, remember that first game, though, against West Brom was a bit dodge. But uh, he's still Thiago Silva. Happens. Yeah, he's, he's still Thiago Silva. And uh, Zuma's been... But, you know, I could... <laughs> thing is, Zuma has been good, though. So normally it would be Thiago Silva and Gabriel. And mm. I bet you a lot of Arsenal fans could argue that. I would say that, at least. If he's we had this a month up. ago, I think you'd probably get in. But I don't think so now because he's dropped off as well. Has he really dropped off? I mean, I know you got I've red cards. I've seen some mistakes he... from him. Like, you can tell oh, me if it's wrong because you've seen more Arsenal than me. But I've I don't seen think it's a mistake. I, I think what I've seen is him being influenced with the, you know, the dead wood around him. 
you know, there's only a certain level. You look at uh, uh, Zuma's game, it's, it's risen with, with Thiago Silva. Mm. Who's Gabriel got? Holden? David Luiz? Mustafi? Do you get me? Like, obviously, he's not going to have that same. I'm sure if he was next to um, Thiago Silva, he'd look, for, he'd look far better as well. And also, Gabriel hasn't had a set partner. He's been he's been Louise, then he got injured, then it's been uh, Mustafi a bit, and then it's been. Oh, I remember Holden. we had that issue last season. Yeah, I think exactly. So, so you can see twenty-two Zuma's different being... defensive lineups in forty-one games. Exactly. So when you have a consistent partner, that's why Zuma's improved so much. Whereas I can assure you, if Zuma was next to a Louise, a Holding, and so he looked just as average. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm actually going to go Gabriel over Zuma. But that's just my opinion. Okay, cool. Here's the thing. Thiago Silva will keep him there anyway. Gabriel or Kurt Zuma will let you guys decide that in the comment section down below. Left back, Tierney versus Ben Chilwell. This one, not even a bad debate, to be honest. I think both are pretty decent left backs. Tierney as well has, to be honest, looked a bit like a clown in recent weeks. But I will also say that Ben Chilwell's performances have dropped in recent weeks as well. Yeah, I think Chilwell um, and Tierney, I think if you want to go off ability, it's Tierney, you know that, you know, before before um, you signed Chilwell this season, were you really enthusiastic for the signing, like, oh yeah, Chilwell's a great left back? I was fine with Chilwell, I just didn't want him to be 80 million, we got him down yeah, to 50 million. Yeah, but you know what I mean, he's a good left that. back, he's a good left back, and I think Tierney's that much better, but I think he is better, that's the point I'm trying to make. Um, but form-wise, yeah, Reece, uh, sorry, t uh, Chilwell's been very good and better than Tierney this season, but again, I go back to it, Chelsea have had a set players next to him, Thiago Silva. Zuma and, and Reese James are three players there that you know are very good players and also have you know stability there and a goalkeeper behind them. Whereas with Tierney, he's been left back, left wing back, le uh, you know, left center back. So, but I still would go Tierney over Chilwell. Okay, um, I would go for Ben Chilwell only because of the impact that we've seen from him this entire season. Yeah, but you said yourself, statistically, form, statistically, not statistically, he's probably been the best left back in the league as well in recent, yeah, but not recent form, weeks, but as I said, part of the season. It's form, though. Are you saying, if I ask Chelsea fans right now, if I before you sign Chilwell, if I ask Chelsea fans... Would if we're Tierney over Chilwell, Chilwell they Tierney? all take Chilwell. I'm sure they would. No, Definitely. I'm sure they would. Now, right now, the right now, obviously, you've seen him play. You're mm. going to say Chilwell. But we, when you signed him, I can assure you, a lot of you... I heard, what was it? What was, someone said on Twitter. I forgot his name now. Oh, I've forgotten it. He said Saka. You wanted Saka at left-back over, over Chilwell. So don't tell me for a second. Saka at left-back? It was, um, it was That's Matisse. That's madness. Really? Yep. He, said, he mean, made a video, bro. He made big a video. up Matisse, he... but also Matisse didn't want Ziyech at the start, so we all say the wrong things from time yeah, to time. Okay. Okay. So Listen, I'll give him that one, but cool. This one, we ain't going to agree on this one, so we'll leave this one down to you guys in the comment section as That's well. Cool. Let's go into midfield. Midfield yes. will be a fun one. Um, Me, straight up, I want N'Golo Kante, Mason Mount, and... Mateo Kovacic. I'm going to have to go for all three. I can't lie. So you want you want all three Chelsea midfield. Kante is world class. Uh, Mount is is good, underrated. And do you, who else you put Kovacic? I think he's yeah. very good as well. Um, I would go for a similar midfield three, but Party comes in. I don't know for who he comes out. So who goes out? Kante is very good as well, obviously. And so is Kovacic. But you know what that I sounds think... like? That yeah. sounds like you rate it. That sounds like you rate him up enough to put him in there. But you, you're not sure which one he comes out for. So that sounds no, like there's a I don't want to look. The, the moment I say take up Kante for Pate, the whole debate begins. Oh, but Kante is a World Cup winner. But Kante, the moment I take Tovic Kovacic out, your Kovacic hive rises out of nowhere. Hello, hello. Kovacic is just, you know, there's a lot of stands of these people. That's what I'm trying to say. Yep. I'm trying to keep people happy here, isn't it? But obviously, I know you would have taken it as well. You would have taken Pate at Chelsea. Don't lie to yourself for a second. No. Nope. There's I a reason why Stanford. your fans are begging on the knees for, for, for Declan Rice with all due respect. So you would have taken Partey. So don't tell me apparently, for a second. That you no, apparently we were interested in him on deadline day, but it wasn't the type of DM that Frank Lampard wanted. So he said, no, I'm going to leave him. What, what did you want, Lewis? What did you want? Don't no, no, listen. What did you want? Forget Lampard. I want, I want what Frank Lampard wants. Because oh, cool. the players now, that now Frank that, Lampard yeah. wants... Is, it, is that how it's moving though? Yeah, because I remember you telling me, hey, well, Partey might be the one, you know. Yeah, yeah. You're, listen. Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Thomas Partey. The timeline. Imagine the time. Oh, forget that. You know, no, you know. Don't lie to yourself. You know he would get into a team. But he is a, he is a world class midfielder. I'm not saying Kante is, and I'm not saying Kovacic isn't at that level. I think he's not world class yet, but he's you know he's a very very good midfielder. And Mount would give the team creativity, so I can't really take him out for that. 
But Partey gets on a midfield. Come on now, let's not. I I but stand by my I opinion that Partey walks. Well, whoever, you've got to take one out. And Kovacic is not, not like yourself. He's not been Lampard's favourite this season. He's been benched quite a few times. He is now. Like he was well, a, it, he was initially at the start of the season, but he's listen, falling. I think most Chelsea fans now. that would agree, Partey does get into that team. You, you know he would. He's a world class midfielder. I know he's been injured, but the, you can't put well, your we it, Well, if we wanted him at the summer, we would have got him. That's the thing. That's what sticks out of my he would be in our team right now if Frank Lampard wanted him. But I he's can't not. believe I'm having this. Do you remember See, I was nice. Said, I, I want was a nice as Zuma like, and Co, right? But Chelsea. this is getting out of hand now. Yeah, I give you your, your Zuma and your uh, Thiago Silva. Obviously, but James gets it. We didn't want the player. On, you said ability as well. Come on, but now, we didn't want you... the player. I was like saying off didn't want Kante and we got Xhaka. What does that mean? Kante is the worst player than Xhaka. Actually, no. actually, no, no, no. That is a very good point. That's a very good point. Um Fine, you know what? This is probably the only time I'll do. I'll give you one of the players because I'll move N'Golo Kante. Give into me one of, one of the players. Eight. Come on, let's put some respect on my Ghanaian excellence's name, bro. Put bro, some respect. This bro. guy's world class, man. Have you seen? Did you see that performance at Old Trafford? Not a single one of your central midfielders, all due respect, could do that. Kante is a very, very good world class CD defensive midfielder, but on the ball, I need driving with it, taking players on, World Cup bodying Pogba, I need bullying you to Pogba. Some respect bro. on my World Cup player. This nah, guy's not, a Pogba. Bro, I literally team. said he's world class. I can't say anything else above that. But as an overall central midfielder, you know, and what I want in this team, I would have Kante. I'd just take over to chat. That's what I'm saying. Right. Come on now. I'm not gonna be a comp- I'm not gonna be a complete waste man. So guys in the comment section, allow me. Oh, don't do that, bro. You say it. Say it. Say it. You say it yourself. No, no, I want you to say that, bro. For comment, you're you're hiding behind the comments now. Say it. Can we'll say have, we'll, party we'll, 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 mounts. Say it. We'll say, have, say it. We will have party in DM. It's fine. We will take party. Lampard wouldn't take him, but we'll take him. It's cool. No, it's and Golo Kante comes in in the attacking eights roles next to Mason Mount because he loved playing in the box box centre midfield role anyway and I'll die on that hill even if you guys hate me for it and let's go into the front three um there's a guy you forgot to mention by the way he's just hiding you know who? your record signing it's just they didn't get mentioned did he Kai Havertz yeah, bro I said him... bro we didn't said ability mention, bro. this guy's coming this guy's coming but, but no, already bro, did... we did a combined them on ability, TV. we didn't go in there either if you're going on ability Mount is very good. Havertz is better. But... So would you want to switch? No, nah, listen. My mid for free, if I had a choice, even though Havertz isn't an out-and-out you know, midfielder, that's my issue, though. You can't really play him as an eight. If you're playing a 4 for 3 in it, that's a formation-wise. Hmm. But if I was to maybe have a two midfield, a pivot of Kante and Partey, and then Havertz around of that, that's my choice. Yeah, anything that pushes Havertz further forward, I think that would be great yeah. for me. The only thing is, we're doing it based... It's because it's also ability. It's also ability based on position. Havertz yeah, is a number exactly. 10. He's good yeah. at the number 8 role. He's good. Maybe he can play a false 9. Again. That's... I've been, I'm have been. i not going to lie. I've been dreaming of that for a while. I've been okay. dreaming of that for ages. That link up with Timo Werner would be excellent. But we are waffling. We'll get into the front three now. Um yes. In the right, I think it has to be Hakim Ziyech. I had this debate with Robbie numerous times and I enjoyed it. And yeah, it has to be Hakim Ziyech on the right. The wizard yeah, of Amsterdam fun. himself. Now, I could, I'll take Ziyech. I would have them at Arsenal, innit? So I'm not going to say don't want Ziyech. Right, cool. In the middle, um, we're going to have to go for... What's his name? The guy that ages like a fine wine. ex Arsenal himself. Olivier no. Giroud. Shut the fuck up. No. The greatest oh, target man in the world. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, big man. I, I've respected you a lot, Lewis, but I've lost it all now. <laughs> because, um, listen, Giroud's a very good striker, I have to say. And do you know what? Loki, he suits our system right now. What mm. we're playing right now a lot more than our current strikers do, like, like is it? But come on now. He's not Giroud when he was 29, 28. You know, he's supposed to be 33, 34 now. If anything, he's getting better. Nah, I don't, I'm not saying he's a bad tracker by any means, but I actually you know what I low key rate Charles, I, I low key rate Tammy Abraham. Very, very low. Nice, I, I like that. You're part of the Tammy Hive. No, nah, I just think I've seen him play and develop his game. At first, I was a bit skeptical. But he's learned a lot as, from Zuri. I can't no, as, yeah, as I've seen him develop, he has all that physical aspects to be a complete striker. Like, no doubt about that. It's just about you know be becoming a killer. You know, he's mm. not really a kid. He's, you know, Giroud was great after, but he was never a killer. You know, like when you give him a chance, he probably take two. If you if you give him three chances, he probably take one chance out of the three. 
But with Abraham, he has the qualities and the ability there, but it's just, you know, becoming that killer mentally. Um, but yeah, down the middle, I'm not going to argue for Lacazette, because I can't. I'm not going to argue for Nketi 100%. Um, and yeah, so uh, Giroud or Abraham, in my opinion. Like, that's to be the two. So, you choice between you, to be honest. Giroud or... Um... I will probably it depends on what you want. If you want to right play, now. if if you're playing Mount in midfield, you want him to play off someone. Drew's perfect. Yeah, I, I prefer someone... Drew based on ability anyway. So I would go for Olivier Drew. Oh, listen, man, I'm not trying to. I hate to admit it, but listen, man, you just got to take it on the chin. All right, cool. Um, left wing now. Timo <laughs> Werner versus. Yo, yeah, you said Henry ability, right? Listen, listen, brother, brother. You said ability. Yeah, ability. Forget the German supersonic. Ability, right? Aubameyang is a better player than Werner. Werner has potential to even be better than Aubameyang because his potential is there. He's got the traits, the speed, the finishing ability when he wants to use it. But in 2020, right now, Aubameyang is the better player. You could, uh, If you can make a case for Aubameyang to be one of the best forwards in the league, he wouldn't win it, no, but he can make a debate for it because he's still Aubameyang. I heard he's someone bad... take away his goals and he's, a, he's the Gabonese Danny Welbeck. That's like well, saying take away, Vernis, take away Werner's pace and what is he? Um, A very good finisher, even though in recent weeks... Oh, 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 We're doing this based on ability, oh, 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 not form, aren't we? I thought this is ability, not form. Bro, listen, one, uh, listen, listen, I'll say, listen, I'll say, right. You can say uh, ability, right, over form, but the chances he's missing is not form. That is ability, a lack of ability. Nah, because there's you lack can't... of confidence. There's Bro, lack listen, of confidence. I for, for, listen, I, I, I am all a man. I'm a man about confidence. I understand how important it is to footballers. But when you're missing tappings and tappings and tappings and tappings, that not is all, not confidence. They're not all tappings. I have seen there's like full there's tappings. There's one or four. two misses that are disgusting. And like, Liverpool. That's Liverpool. That's... Liverpool weren't even disgusting. I'm not having that. The, the bad one, the Wrens one, was disgusting. Yeah, I'll the Wren one. The one against, um, was it Leeds or, I don't know who it was, it was just like on the goal line and he could just shoot and he clears onto the ball. No, so. that one, that one even a oh, shot. Oh, this is good excuses, bro. All, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, Aubameyang is not in great took form. took a touch when he should have just left the ball and that Obamian was Aubameyang is not in great form. Neither is Werner, to be fair. But if I'm choosing a player right now, it's Aubameyang. Still, man, come on, let's put respect on your name, man. You had the you second just... most goals involvements in the whole of Europe last season. Go on, make a, make a, make a, make me a reason or a, give me a reason why Werner it over Aubameyang. I want to hear this why. I think his finishing's better. I think his link up plays better. I think he's a faster saying, player. He's not a better finisher. Now go he again. Is a better finisher. Oh. I, I've already told you. Okay, so you want <laughs> Timo Werner over Aubameyang because he's a better yeah. finisher, not because the logical reasons why he's he's a younger player with a higher potential. But because he's a, he's not a better finisher. Because we're doing it based on ability right now, aren't he's we? He's not a better finisher. Aubameyang's the better finisher. Um, he's a more complete player. I'm not saying he's perfect because he isn't. But definitely, I'd go for Aubameyang over Werner. Come on, now, let's be honest. Werner's a good striker. Oh, yeah. He's a very. And maybe go Werner go was down. If maybe it was form, it would be an even tougher debate because right now Timo Werner's form. Maybe you could really put Werner down the middle, and and Aubameyang left. But I, I definitely have. You have to put Aubameyang in this. Do you watch the Africa final, my bro? Yeah, watch I watched that. that. I, there Man was, what, turned Zuma many... on his ass. The, yeah, the great Zuma you're talking about right now. Yeah, remember that Zuma? How many yellow cards? And yeah, to be honest, yeah. I've always said that mistake with Zuma, that was Antonio Rudiger's fault. He was the one that oh, ran out 30 yards to do nothing and get nutmeg by Hector Bellerin, of all people. He well, left Zuma exposed. Werner and Aubameyang are very similar players. They're very quick. They're actually not the best dribblers, even though they have the speed, let's be honest. They're mm. not technically that most gifted. But they are goal scorers. Werner gets goals. But what my argument case is, Werner and Aubameyang had very similar records in the Bundesliga. In fact, Aubameyang was a little bit better in the Bundesliga. He got like 30 goals per season, whereas Werner was like 22, 20, 23. But look at how Aubameyang translated that form into the Premier League. He came into Arsenal. Goal, 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 goal. Werner's coming. He scored a couple of goals and he's going to work nine games without a goal. He's missing tap-ins. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, I have no doubts of a Werner as an overall player, and he's going to be a success. But as it stands so then right now... are you now, basing it off their form when they first joined? No, not form. I'm talking about right now, ability-wise. I have... Werner's nowhere near the finish article, whereas Aubameyang is in his finish article because he's 31, 32, or whatever he is. Werner's not finished yet. So I'm not saying Werner can't be better. Of course he can. But right now, he isn't. All right, cool. Well, 
I don't know if don't I say can the comments. This one either. So yes, the I am leaving this one to the comment section. And guys, that is the end of the video. Babs, I'm always happy to have you on. It's always a great debate. We always go back and forth. Everyone, check out Babs' channel if you guys haven't done so already. I'll leave a link down in the description below. And his app will literally send you straight to the channel. So just click the button. It'll send you straight there. Hit the subscribe button. Check out Carefree Lewis G as well if you guys haven't done so already. And we'll see you for the Chelsea Arsenal game. Take care and up the chill.